Hello guys, welcome back to comments and it's time for another tutorial and today we are going to talk about how to create a tutorial within your game. We are not going to talk about the designing part of it, we are more going to talk about how to actually create it, so actually how to script it, how to program it and well a small bit about designing it so it's easier for you to design for example if you want to learn the player how to drive a car you can do it at two ways you can just see if it's actually steering the wheel and things like that or you can just do it with checkpoints and just see if it reaches a checkpoint and if it reaches a checkpoint it basically means it knows how to drive and just before that you can give instructions about how to drive so Always if you're creating a tutorial, see if with this system we are currently going to code, try to see what is the most easy way to actually see how we can program it and not make it a very heavy program for the CPU to run and things like that. Also, once you, well, you have a tutorial and you don't want to check everything, for example, if you are checking if a car will hit the checkpoint you don't have to see if there are any keys pressed and if it's for example the walking around keys which is maybe another part of the tutorial just to show people how to walk around so those things we actually need to split those up and the way we're going to do that is actually by creating a main script which is the tutorial script and we are going to inherit from the tutorial script which basically means we can use the same functions within our script we can make a list of all the tutorials and we can just access different scripts and we can create a virtual function which means we can just call it from the tutorial manager which is another script we're going to create and once we actually run that virtual uh, function it will actually go towards the script that's beneath it, so the script that's inherited, for example the key input script, and it will just do what is standing right in that function, which can be a different thing than what is standing in the trigger function. This is probably a little bit abstract for you guys because you haven't seen it or you haven't really worked with object-oriented programming yet. So we're just going to start. And we just see um, how far we come within this tutorial, within this part of this tutorial. And in the end, I hope you guys understand it a little bit more. And also at the end of all these tutorials, we will talk a little bit more about object-oriented programming. But that's not the main focus of this tutorial. So if you want to know more about that, please put it in the comments or just search on Google or whatever for another tutorial. So let's start. Right-click, create. And we're going to create a folder and we're going to call that tutorial. Within this, uh, in a script folder where there's a tutorial folder, the reason we have this is because we need a lot of scripts in the end for the tutorial. Within these scripts we are going to use in this uh, tutorial itself, so this video, there will be around four scripts. But of course, if you've got a game, you probably want to explain a lot of different sides of the game which probably means you need around 10 scripts or so and it's a little bit more cleaned up if you just create a folder especially for that. I'm going to create two scripts right from the start. The very first one, so right click and create C sharp script, is going to be called tutorial manager. The second one we're going to call tutorial and this is the base script we just talked about and where all the other scripts are going to uh, inherit from. We don't need a start function, we only need an awake function and the difference between awake and start is that awake is going to be called before start is getting called. So uh, for example if you do it in the debug and you uh, create here a debug.log, what is in the awake will uh, be more above in the debug than what is standing in the start function. We need to do something, uh, we need to add it here towards the list. So we are going to keep a list from all the tutorials. And because we are lazy programmers, we don't want to manually just add it towards the list and do it in the right order. What we're just going to do is just call here a function that will just add it towards the list in the tutorial manager. 
and there on the start it will actually start um, showing the very first step in, the, in your tutorial within your game. We need two different variables and those two variables are important because every tutorial part needs those two variables. It's not specific for, for example, if you want to explain about the keys, it's not specific if you want people to move towards it. Those two variables are needed always. So let me just zoom in. The very first one is a public int order. And the order starts with zero. And well, it's pretty straightforward. Um, if you put in zero, it means that will be uh, going first. Then you will make another tutorial and you will call it one, or you will uh, change the order to one. And well, after the zero tutorial, it will play the tutorial with the order of one and so on. Also one thing every tutorial needs is a string explanation. And this is the part that you can make as big as you want. For example, we are just going to use a string, which means we're just going to do it with text. So for example, um, you have uh, to walk around, you can press the W, E, S, D keys. And you need to do it right now. That's for example, the explanation of walking around. But you can also do it and add here a variable for an image and just show that image on the screen. We're not going to do this within this tutorial or there needs to be a lot of comments uh, asking how to do it, but that is one way to do it. Here we are going to add it towards the list in a uh, tutorial manager. We cannot do that right now because uh, we don't really have the tutorial manager already scripted, but we first want to create another function. And this is the function that is called public virtual. That's very important that there is named virtual void. And we're going to call this check if happening. And we're just going to keep this all on one line. As you can see, there's nothing in between here. And that's because we can now call this um, from the tutorial manager. We can just say uh, we got a tutorial, so current tutorial dot check if happening, just like a normal function. And this will actually check it for another script, which we're going to create within a minute. And it will be the same. We can just call this for the walking around. We can just call it for the trigger. Uh, so to see if you are on the current place and all those kinds of things without really have to program four different uh, functions and we need to have an if statement to check which you need to have. So that's very handy. But now we're going on with the tutorial, tutorial manager. So open it up. And the very first thing we're going to do is add here another line. And this is using Unity Engine dot UE. And the reason that is, is we need to show it on the screen with a with a simple text. Normally I would say just create another manager for the UE and do everything else, but because it's just a tutorial and we don't have the time to actually create everything that a normal game has, we're just going to keep it right within our tutorial manager. The very first variable we have is a public list of all the tutorials. So we can just put here tutorial and tutorials and it's going to be a new list. Now we are going to have also a public text, text. Um, this text, and we can just call it, for example, the explanation text. It really doesn't matter how you call it, as long as you understand what variable uh, is doing whatever you need. So you notice this is the text that you see on the screen and we can just show here the explanation of the current uh, mission. Then we are going to create um, an instance. This is something that we can do and we know we only have one tutorial manager within the scene. And we don't want to assign everything within the inspector which object and where the tutorial manager is. So what we can do is having a private static, which means it's above 
all all the scripts tutorial manager and instance without capital right here then we're going to create public static tutorial manager and have instance and with a capital then instead of ending this line we are just do it like it is a function i'm going to put here cat cat means that once we are actually just um just calling uh, this well function it is not the right word but once we're calling this and we want to cat it which means we will return it we can also um try to set it set is that means we are going to change the variable then we can do it right like this we don't need to use this here but you can also use that we are going to get it but we really don't know right now which tutorial manager is a tutorial manager of the scene so we're doing here an if statement we're just going to check if the instance without capital is null which means we didn't actually assign this variable yet we are going to say it is going to be the same as game object dot find object of type and we're going to have tutorial manager so now if you haven't an instance yet so you haven't assigned this it will just uh, well assign it but of course there is a chance that you've got to add it within your scene and there isn't a tutorial manager so again we are just going to check if the instance is the same as null which means this didn't work there wasn't an object found as tutorial manager so what we're going to do is debug.log and we are just going to say there is no tutorial manager so you can just see it in your debug that there is just something wrong and you know what the mistake is there isn't a tutorial manager and now we can actually just return the instance again without capital and now what we can do is all kind of amazing we don't have to specify which tutorial manager we have we can just say tutorial manager so just the object itself and we can just say dot instance and we'll just find the one tutorial manager that is within the scene and it will just return it after that uh, what we're going to do is go towards tutorials which was this all the variable we just created at and we just want to add this so now it will just on awake just on the very start you hit the scene you start the scene up it will just add all the tutorials that you have within the scene towards this list right here then we only have one other variable and that's a private tutorial current tutorial this is private because we don't have to change it uh, within the inspector also all the scripts don't need it so we can just keep it private okay so we have time to do one last thing and that is going to be one function to actually get the next tutorial so get a tutorial we want to have currently on the current tutorial and which one we actually want to do so what we're going to do is we're going to have a function a public tutorial get tutorial by order so remember that we had here like an or because we don't know in which way it will add it towards the list we cannot say just pick the very first one from the list and we're just going to say that that is the next objective we don't know if that's really the next one we want to have and we decided to want so what we do we are going to have a function get tutorial by order with int the order and we're just going to watch the uh, going through the whole list so tutorials dot count and we're just going to check if 
it actually is within the list with that order. So dot order, if this is the same as order, so that's the uh, into check, we will just return the tutorials.e, which basically means we return the object that we currently need, specified by this variable. As of course, there is a chance that you don't have that order. For example, if you only got two, um, two tutorials and you're already with the third one, well, you won't return anything of this. So once that is, we just want to return null. This, if you return null, we can just check that whenever we are calling this function. If this null, that basically can mean two things, or there's an error, you've got to assign the right number somewhere, or it's the end of this tutorial within this scene. But that was it for today. Um, a lot of explanation about what we're going to do and not a lot of coding already, but I really hope you guys liked it. And it is really, I would really appreciate it if you would like, share, and subscribe. And see you guys next week with the next part of the, in this tutorial of how to create a tutorial within your game. Bye.